Hello everyone and welcome to another Q&A session. I'm joined today by our partner in Colombia, Ivana Botero. Um, I'm really excited to dive into Colombia. I think it's going to be a fantastic um, uh, visa option for people looking to relocate to South America. It's one that honestly I need a refresher course in, so I'm kind of excited to, to understand mm -hmm. a bit more of your answers so you know I can understand you know, potentially where, where I want to relocate someday. So uh, with that said, Ivania, uh, welcome. Thank you, Jim. I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Yeah, so I know that obviously there is a digital nomad visa category, um, you know, with that digital nomad visas can vary on, on what they actually are. Digital nomad visa is the buzzword, um, but maybe you can kind of start off by explaining what that type of visa is in Colombia specifically, and we can kind of get the ball rolling from there. Okay, great. So the digital nomad visa is a recent development in, in Colombian legislation, and it is um, ranked within the visitor visas type. Basically, what we're what trying to attract is people from abroad that will still be working abroad, but traveling here in Colombia and living here and, and basically making expenses here. So it is a great opportunity if you are working, like if you still have employment in your country of origin or if you're working abroad, but you want to travel and have like all the experience, all, all of what the country has to offer. Okay, and then, so how long is that visa awarded for typically? Okay, so the digital nomad visa will be awarded for a top of two years but it is usually linked to your health insurance. So if you have a health insurance that is only for one year, then your visa will be only one year long. Okay, so if you can get two year health insurance, then you're gonna get a two year visa. So that's yes, kind of the- Yes, you get the maximum time awarded. Okay. And, and it is very good, like what it differs from other type of visitor visas in the country is that you can still extend it afterwards. It has okay. no restrictions. So is it, can you extend it indefinitely? Because that was going to be my next question. Yeah, it can be extended indefinitely. Like so far, okay, so the digital Noma visa was um, introduced to the country like a couple of years ago. So, so far we're still reaching like the end of the first visas, but we haven't had any problems extending them for longer. Okay. Yeah, obviously with an indefinite, you know, ruling, if the government changes at some point, then it's no longer. Exactly. So maybe for for uh, people watching this to keep that in mind, but that's great to hear that it is extendable indefinitely. Do you know how long uh, typically somebody would have to stay in country to apply for dual citizenship or is that not even an option? Well, that will be um, here in Colombia. You will have to be at least five years here but you will have to um, have a migrant visa, which is different from okay. the digital nomad visa. So you will have to kind of switch visas here at some point, and then your time will start like five years in order to access, like to get the nationality. Okay, so that's good to know is that uh, the digital nomad visa itself, while it's, you know, indefinitely extendable, it's not a clear pathway to like dual citizenship or anything like that. Yes, it is not. Okay, it perfect. Not, and, and it is not even to a uh, permanent residency. Oh, it, really? It, so yeah, it, it really doesn't make sense since you have like a, an indefinite extension, but you will always be like a visitor in the country. If you want okay. to be a permanent resident, you will also have to transition to a migrant visa at some point. Okay. Um, but with the, you know, the difference between the permanent residency, it does give you the temporary residency, correct? Or is... Yes. Okay. That's great. And that's and awarded have a national for... ID, you can do basically everything that, that a national or a temporary or a permanent resident, sorry, will do here. Yeah, and, and the main difference between a temporary resident and a permanent resident is just that a permanent resident pretty much has the ability to continue extending that as long as they remain a resident in the country, right? Whereas a temporary resident, they have to reapply every time their temporary residency is about to expire. Is that, am I right on yes, that? Yes, you will have to reapply as a temporary resident every two years or so, every year or two years, depending, like, like I said, on, on your insurance and, and how long were you approved to stay here. Um, if you're a permanent resident, you will only have to, it is almost like reapplying for a visa, but it's it's only like updating, like yeah. um, 
your document and you will have to do that every five years or so. So it differs like in the time uh, you will spend less money in, in this process because it's longer. Yeah, and you have the right to extend it assuming you're still a resident as opposed to temporary residency. You have to prove that you're still eligible, correct? Is that kind of another difference between temporary and permanent? Um, yes, like in the temporary, you will have to prove um, everything again, uh, like um, your expenses, if you have sufficient funds to stay here, the insurance. With a permanent residency, the only thing that you have to prove is that you haven't left the country for at least two years. Okay, perfect. So that's um, good All right, wonderful. Hopefully that helps people uh, understand kind of the difference there. Um, but I guess, you know, speaking of insurance, I know you said that that kind of uh, indicates how long you'll be awarded that year or two years. Does it have to be uh, Colombian specific insurance or can it be, you know, travel insurance as long as you're covered in Colombia? Now, it can be travel insurance as long as you're covered. Uh, actually, with the temporary residence, um, it is encouraged to have like international coverage. Like if, if you have, yeah, travel insurance, international companies, all of that, because the idea is for you to not be a burden like to the national system. So you won't be necessarily be covered by the national institutions. Uh, I mean, insurance companies are something entirely different. Okay. So yes, you can have travel insurance as long as it, as it has like extensive coverage for you. Okay. Um, and then kind of speaking of, you know, getting in that, um, or not getting into the national uh, programs, taxes. Um, obviously, I know that, you know, we'll, we'll probably want to refer to a tax advisor specifically, but just in generally, um, are you going to be, you know, required to file taxes in Colombia once you've been there for, you know, a year or how does that work? Okay, so you are required to file taxes here if you spend more than 183 days in the country, which is approximately like six months and a couple of days over the six months. Mm -hmm. So if you interrupt that um, within a year, you wouldn't have to necessarily file taxes here. Um, if you, for example, if you are traveling outside of the country and you don't spend like those consecutive days uh, within the year, you wouldn't necessarily have to file taxes here. But if you spend like a whole year here, you will have to. Maybe you wouldn't have to pay anything necessarily, but you would have to file taxes. Okay. Um, and then obviously this one might be only geared towards the U.S. Uh, clients. So we can, you know, maybe briefly touch this because it won't apply for a lot of others. Um, but is there any double taxation agreement with the U.S. that you're familiar with or anything um, I'm not familiar with the U.S. I know that there's one with Canada. Okay. But I, I don't know with the U.S. Perfect. Um, all right. Um, and then I guess, you know, you, you, you said that if somebody were to stay under that minimum of 183 days, you might not have to file. Um, speaking of those kind of stay requirements for the digital nomad visa, if you're intending on, you know, renewing it or if you only got a year and you want to stay two or, you know, you stay two and you want to stay another two, how, what do those stay requirements look like to be able to renew it? Are there any, or do you have to stay a majority of the year? No, you do not have any stay requirements for the digital nomad visa. That's, that's the beauty of the visa. Uh, but what you will have to prove every time that you apply is that you have sufficient funds to stay here. And, and there is a minimum, it is three minimum salaries here in Colombia, and that in US dollars will be around $1,000. Okay, wow. So that's that's actually probably really exciting for a lot of people is that um, you can you can come into the country, you don't have to stay like six months or four months or anything like that. You can travel freely, you have the right to get an apartment and all that. So you can pretty much use Colombia as a base to travel around South America as long as you make a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, that's definitely it. Colombia has become a hub for yeah. South American travel. So I think they're gearing towards that when they when they design this policy. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so that's really that's really good to know. Um, and then, kind of speaking of accommodation, I know I kind of just highlighted it there. Um, do you have like a general understanding of not only what someone might want to anticipate having to spend on kind of the relocation, but what they can anticipate uh, generally, you know, month to month on living expenses? Okay, so um, this will vary greatly between cities in Colombia. The most expensive cities right now to live in are Bogota and Medellin, which I think it's where most of, of our um, 
visitors stay usually. Um, I will say on a monthly basis, if you're making a conversion, you will be spending around $600 or $800 a month, um, including renting, um, food, if you want to move around. Okay. Wow. Yes. Um, so also quite affordable. <laughs> it's making it this, this conversation is making me want to try out Colombia. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the tax thing is really nice as well. The fact that you don't have to have that minimum stay. Um, okay. So are, are dependents allowed to come on this visa? Obviously I know usually boyfriend and girlfriend's not allowed, but you know, somebody who's a marriage partner or children or something of the sort. Yes. Um, this visa has what we call beneficiaries and it is basically three types of beneficiaries, your common law partner, your um, spouse, or your kids, as long as they're younger than 25 years old. Oh, wow. And, or, and of course, it includes maybe if you, if, if you have a child that, that has a disability, it, it has no um, age limit. Okay. So that's nice. So 25 would be the limit. Usually it's 18. Um, do you know yes, the reason know. behind 25? <laughs> Here in Colombia, we are considered dependents of our parents up until 25, which is oh, wow. more or less when you're finishing university and all of that. So they extended that to the visas as well, which I know is unusual, but you never know. <laughs> like some yeah. families, maybe they have older children. And they can yeah, I, I get that question a lot, to be honest, is they want to bring, you know, the, somebody who's just going into college or kind of they want them to be able to come along uh, with their parents or something. So that that's also quite nice and then i guess you know we've we've kind of talked a lot of these so we're kind of wrapping up here but the submission timeline you know how long would someone might need to consider if i want to go you know right now it's the end of july i want to go in you know september do you think that's feasible it is uh, the processing times for for these visas are 30 days for all colombian visas um it, sometimes it can take a little bit of less time um, right now, we are facing um, approximately three weeks of processing times if, if all the documentation is very clear. So you should calculate like the 30 days of processing times, which is the, the established one. And how long will it take to get hold of the documents? I say they are not overly complex documents, so it shouldn't take you more than a couple of weeks. So maybe a month and a half before your intended travel, you should be fine. Okay. Um, and then kind of speaking on those documents really quickly, um, are they required to be translated into Spanish? And then also, are there background checks required? Okay, so um, the digital NAMA visa does not have a, a background check, but sometimes the officer might request one. Um, they will give you enough time, but that will be something that will be asked of you after submitting your application. Um, the documents, um, most of them would have to be translated. Um, in this case, for the digital nomad visa, there are two, like the most important documents that you will need to provide are the, um, your, your employment letter, proving that you are employed uh, abroad. Um, that wouldn't have to be translated, that document. You can submit it in English or Spanish. Uh, that's the preference of, of, of the applicant. But what you would have to translate is the initial contract of employment or offer letter that you received from your employer. And this is required just to prove like that you have mm, enough time, like that you've been working with this company or abroad like for a year or so. It is not a requirement, but that is something that they will check that you have been employed for a while. Okay. Um, well, fantastic. This has been super great. I know um, we kind of highlighted specifically the digital nomad visa. Obviously, you can help with all immigration. We can help you know, with that at Citizen Remote. Maybe you can quickly highlight other visa options for you know, kind of the remote worker, entrepreneur, freelancer category outside of the digital nomad visa should they want to pursue you know, a pathway to permanent residency or citizenship? Are there any you know, entrepreneurial visas or some, anything of that sort? Yes, there are. There is an, an entrepreneur visa for someone that maybe wants to come here to Colombia and create a company here or, yes, or create like a business in the country. They are also investors visa uh, for people that want to, um, for example, buy a property here and they can have. And these will be migrant visas 
which will be um, a clear path to a permanent residency. You will have to live here like for two or three years and then you will be eligible for the permanent residence. Okay. Um, and then maybe just very, very quickly, because I don't want to take too much of anyone's time or yours specifically. Um, for the investment visa, do you know generally what that kind of minimum investment would be? For the investor visa or the foreign investment visa is $100,000 US dollars. Okay, so um, that's the minimum, of course, you can go over that. I know that's like a very a big amount of money, but that's usually what will grant you like the migrant visa. I think they're gearing uh, for an investor to stay here and maybe be a permanent resident afterwards. Okay. And then, um, so that's good to know. And obviously that's a clear pathway there. In terms of the entrepreneurial visa, are there any um, requirements in terms of the type of company that you can open or the amount that you have to invest in the company or anything of that nature? No, there's not a minimum, but you will have to go like through all the process of having um, incorporated your company beforehand in Colombia. So that might... Like the investment might be getting a contact here, like a lawyer to help you go through all the process of incorporating your company, getting all ready with taxes. Um, there's not a specific type of company um, to apply for. Um, th they're very flexible in that sense. Okay. And speaking of lawyers that can assist with that, that would be you. <laughs> I can assist with that. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, well, wonder, wonderful. Um, Ivania, this has been incredibly helpful. Um, I know it's been super informative for me. The Columbia DNV sounds kind of amazing. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully more people who, who see this and hear about this, you know, consider it as an option, um, just considering the sheer flexibility of it all. Um, and, and yeah, do, is there anything maybe that we missed that you wanted to highlight or, or do you think we covered it all? No, I think overall, um, Colombia is a great country to visit. Um, I know that some people might have some safety concerns, but it's not necessarily all that we're seeing uh, on the media. I think overall, if you're really looking um, forward to having like a digital nomad lifestyle, the, the most important thing that you must take into account that applies to Colombia and I think any other country in the world is to make sure that when you come like to the country that you're following the law, that you're not doing anything that will get you in trouble anywhere else. And besides that, I, I will encourage everyone to really come here and visit. It's a great country. The people are very nice. And, and I know that like in, in my experience so far with the digital nomads that I've helped, they are very happy here and they're looking forward to stay. Amazing. And, and I think in general, anyone going to another country, probably follow the laws and be a good person. <laughs> Just good yeah. advice in general. No, <laughs> I think sometimes in, in, in here, uh, I feel the need to be very emphatic in that <laughs> because you, you never know. Yeah, I think it's absolutely. just a good heads up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, wonderful. So uh, thanks again, Ivania. If anyone is interested in getting your assistance, they can obviously just head to the Citizen Remote app, find Columbia, and, and schedule a consultation directly with you. Uh, we can take next steps in processing your visa and getting everything sorted for you all in the app um, with not only the Digital Nomad, but any other visa category in, in regards to immigration. So um, hopefully, if anyone's interested after this, this conversation, they'll, they'll reach out to you. Okay, great. Yes, I am looking forward um, to hearing from all of you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks so much. Thank you, team. Cheers.